And welcome again to the big match. Today we put the spotlight on the third division player who never seems to be out of the headlines, Ted McDougall of Bournemouth. Today's Sunday People picks up the fact that he was watched yesterday by the Spurs assistant manager Eddie Bailey and asks, but is he worth £200,000? Well, that's something we should be answering today because Brentford against Bournemouth is our main match. And after it, Ted McDougall talks about his growing restlessness for first division football and manager John Bond admits that it might be sooner than later that he gets that chance. Well, also today, an outstanding game from the First Division, Manchester United against Derby County, the champions. And for our bonus match, we have the Midland Derby game from the Second Division, Nottingham Forest against Aston Villa. But our first main match at Griffin Park, Brentford, where so many eyes of the fans, the critics and the usual scouts were on Ted McDougall. 47 League and Cup goals last season is the sort of bait to attract clubs from every division. It makes McDougall a marked man on the field, but in spite of that, he's amongst the goals again this season. With five, he is again Bournemouth's leading scorer. So, Ted McDougall lines up against this Brentford side that began the season so well, but now they've slipped. But back into the team today for this match comes number 11, John Doherty, after injury, and the amateur Paul Priddy returns to goal. As for the Bournemouth side, Tommy Mitchinson is back after injury to wear the number 10 shirt. And the game has its full share of personalities besides Ted McDougall. There are three former West Ham players. Bobby Howe at number three, he's one of them. Then at number six is the Bournemouth skipper Keith Miller. And then a former great favourite up from Park, Harry Redknapp wearing the number seven shirt. And then of course there's Jimmy Gabriel, bought recently from Southampton. And in the Brentford side, David Jenkins, who recently had spells both with Arsenal and with Spurs. So Bournemouth in their blue and black striped shirts. Kick off defending the goal to our right against Brentford in the red and white striped shirts. On a Griffin Park pitch that looks in wonderful condition, thanks to their groundsman John Stepney. Bournemouth, who started rather indifferently at this season, are now beginning to come into form. And here's Harry Redknapp. Bents to bring it away for Brentford, who quite the reverse, started brilliantly and at one point was second in the uh, third division, push over there by Gabriel. But now Brentford have lost their last four games. Bobby Ross brought down by Jimmy Gabriel. And so it's going to be Terry Scales with Brentford's free kick. And Gabriel was right up there again, over his own crossbar for the corner to Brentford. And it's going to be number eight, Mike Allen, former Middlesbrough player, to take the corner for Brentford. Jimmy Gabriel, always uh, full of shouting, formerly with Everton and Southampton, organising that Bournemouth defence, and it curls in again, and not it down, and does it go over? Yes, it goes over, and uh, Doherty is given the credit for it, and Bournemouth's Fred Davis, the uh, goalkeeper, obviously felt there was something wrong with it, but with a minute and a half gone, John Doherty just back in the Brentford side, from that corner, a bit of a scrimmage there, and finally pushed over, and Brentford get just the start they want. Scored by John Doherty, who'd missed seven games through injury, really makes a tremendous comeback for Brentford. Well, Brentford, who've had so little to cheer, in the last uh, few weeks, having lost those four successive games, And that really has got Griffin Park humming. Jenkins trying to turn it in, but Cave was too quick for him. McDougall's first touch of the ball, finding Phil Boyer. And Bentz, the number seven on his back, but clearly going to be playing hard in midfield. Doherty, the scorer, back now. And Murray's ball cut out, in fact, by Mel Machin, who turns it back to Fred Davis. Bobby Howe now. High ball there towards Mickey Cave. Trying to breast it down there for Mitchinson. Cave again, turning it now for Miller. Redknapp wanting it over on the right, but it's with Machen again. And now with Redknapp. David Jones right in there, swept there wide towards McDougall. And Paul Pretty, the amateur goalkeeper, formerly with Maidenhead and Southall.
Bournemouth's throw. Jimmy Gabriel. Machin. Hawley, not a good one there by Machin. Collision there, and I would have thought six of one, half dozen the other, and the referee quite right to allow it to go on. Doherty, played back again for Hawley. Ross, Brentford buzzing a bit at the moment, tried to reach Jenkins, and that was very nearly turned in there by Mike Allen. But now it's Gabriel. Gabriel again with the throw. Boyer. And again a throw to Bournemouth. Harry Redknapp. Mitchinson coming towards him. Oh, and then losing it completely. And it's with Doherty again for Brentford. Swept wide. As Brentford take it up again now through Alan Murray, Jenkins on ahead of him, Murray still going on, and he just gets that out nicely for Hawley, hit hard but into the side netting. From Alan Hawley, another long-standing player in this Brentford side, made over 250 appearances for them. Fred Davis used to play for Cardiff and for Wolves, Welsh under 23 formerly. Nelms, another good jump. Miller, Cave, Keith Miller again, and now Machin. Another of these fullbacks who likes to come along, and he's got a bit of a shot on him, but that's the ball that seeks out Phil Boyer. Cross back nicely, but Nelms cutting it out. Cave going in there, making it quite clear to Alan Nelms that you can't dwell on the ball too long because Bournemouth are very busy and very eager indeed to get back that goal they lost in the first 90 seconds. Alan Nelms there. And Bournemouth's corner. David Jones, the big number five, has gone up. McDougal will be a man they'll aim for. There's McDougal. Oh, having a little go there with Bobby Ross, too. But McDougal still got there with his head and not a very good fist away. Boyer trying to lay it there for his number 10, Mitchinson. Mitchinson still going in and finally Bench bringing it away. Scales. A long way clear, it'll be the pace of Jenkins against two from Bournemouth, and Bobby Howe got in first. Number three, Howe. Flicked nicely wide of uh, the number six, Murray, to the other number six, Miller, into the path of McDougal. He rather missed out on that one, and now McDougal's away. Still McDougal, and a fine save by Pretty. That was a good piece of goalkeeping from McDougal. Someone comes onto the pitch to mob McDougal, which I don't think the referee... Yes, he has just spotted that. And why on earth someone should want to come on and do that, I don't know. But the goalkeeper is also in a bit of trouble. And still that fellow is allowed to walk around the pitch. Well, maybe the uh, policeman there taking a hand with the fellow who came onto the pitch. He must have caught it hard in the stomach, pretty, as he uh, dived at the feet of McDougal, got the ball hard in his stomach. Well, there goes the interloper. And uh, Paul Pretty all right again, having saved Brent Brentford brilliantly, and we get a throw to Bournemouth with Jimmy Gabriel. Boyer. Murray sticking with him. Redknapp with a chance to cross it, flicked on by Mitchinson. Dougal in there! Oh, and McDougal almost got it, and he did! Ted McDougal! That was a wonderful piece of reaction by McDougal. Having got it in on the first pass to got on the post, was so quick to get the rebound in to make the equaliser then for Bournemouth. 1-1. One, one. So, two goals in the first 11 minutes. 
and the player so many people have come to watch, Ted McDougall, the man rated at something like £200,000 by Bournemouth, has scored one of them. So now it's Allen again for Brentford. Crossing again, and Ross, a nice back header there, and Howe watching it all the way. Keeping Murray off as well, that was uh, Bobby Ross, a neat little back flick there in the Alan Gilzean style. Bence up above them all, so was Gabriel. Bence going in again. Boyer now. Well, Howe went a tumbling there, but it's going to be a Bournemouth throw. Boyer playing rather deep and always coming away from his defence, or rather from the Brentford defence. Machin making ground quickly, and Nelms cutting it out for Brentford. Redknapp with his uh, socks already down by his ankles, finding Mel Machin. Redknapp trying the left foot cross this time. Miller was uh, rather getting in the way of McDougall, if anything, there. Jones. That might be just a little too hard, even for Boyer. No, he kept that in well, Boyer. Miller. Crossed again there, again McDougal right in, and Redknapp turning it back again, and will it go? No, it won't! But it looked as though both Cave and McDougal must force it home. Neither of them could quite manage it, and Brentford breathe again. Machin. To Gabriel. Bournemouth playing some neat football now as Mitchinson takes it up. Boyer off in chase once more. And Brentford, Nelms and uh, Gelson between them, forced into an error that gives Bournemouth the corner. David Jones going right up, but it's going to be Harry Redknapp to take it. And all eyes in that Brentford defence seem to be on McDougall, but it's Boyer getting the header in, and Pretty going down well to save it. Pauly taking it from Murray, Jenkins back to Murray again. Ross waiting in the middle, so too is Paul Bence. Bence going to let one go. Well, that was his idea, but it cannons off Machen. Murray played there nicely for Jenkins. <laughs> David Jenkins, who had two or three very good seasons at uh, Arsenal, but never really uh, quite caught the right sort of breezes at Tottenham. In goes Hawley. Oh, and he took that chance well, and the gap opened up for him. Doherty with Allen on the far side, should he want him. Doherty fighting to get another chance, but in fact fought just a little too hard and unfairly. And so Bournemouth get the free kick. When after Hawley's break, it looked as though they might be in some difficulty. Boyer. Jones couldn't quite make contact. Doherty, referee allowing the advantage there, although Doherty looked as though he was uh, knocked from behind. Murray's long cross towards Bobby Ross, down. Oh, and a good header there by Ross. Beautifully directed down by the near post, and he got up so well. Bobby Howe. 
forward for Redknapp. Tried to dummy uh, Scales. Two former West Ham players in conflict there. And now Mitchinson with a lot of room. Boyer. Redknapp. Little dinking cross there. Several of them going in. And the whistle going as well. Which must mean a Brentford free kick. Only a handful of amateurs playing in league football, and this fellow's one of them, young Paul Pretty, made one or two very good saves already. And there goes the whistle for half-time. Although the game died just a little bit towards half-time, so much of the play, a real credit to the third division, with Brentford going into the lead so early in the game, with John Doherty scoring for them inside 90 seconds, and then almost inevitably, it's Ted McDougall who equalised soon afterwards for Bournemouth. Still to come on the big match this afternoon, certainly there's going to be highlights of Manchester United against Derby County, plus our bonus match. The half-time score in the third division game at Griffin Park is Brentford 1, Bournemouth 1, and we'll be right back with you. So Brentford then kick off the start of the second half, 1-1. Brentford now defending the goal to our right. And a lot of people have been watching Ted McDougall over the last few months, and in the centre of the director's box there, the chairman of Crystal Palace, Arthur Waite. Howe. And Mitchinson, a long way forward, McDougall, well offside, well offside. Whether he would have done that under the pressure of not knowing that he was offside, and I'm sure he did know he was offside, we shall never know, but uh, he was certainly quick to sprint on that chance, just a little too quick. Throw to uh, Brentford. Scales with it. Gelson. Towards Doherty, who got in well. And now Jenkins hitting one on the turn. Cannon, luckily for Bournemouth, off one of their defenders straight to Mel Machin. Jenkins again. Cross again towards Bobby Ross, too high for him, and it'll fall out for Redknapp. Scales. Doggerty. Scales again. Left this time for Murray. Hawley outside him. Still with Murray. The cross again, Doherty going right in there, and David Jones getting that away right at the last for Bournemouth. But still now with Nelms. Brentford coming hard now at uh, Bournemouth. Doherty hoping to get in on it, but in fact it goes to Jones, and now for Murray again. Jenkins, oh, he crossed that well. And Gabriel just got ahead above both Ross and Allen. And left the way clear now for Redknapp. Going at some speed, playing it wide for Cave. Howe is going up on the outside of Cave. But McDougall there not getting a very good service, always taking up that position at the far post, and he's uh, got possession now. And again. That time cleverly beating Gelson. The cross, Cave going for it. 
and Jenkins turning it back to Pretty. Obviously enjoying his game here at Griffin Park, uh, David Jenkins, after being on the sidelines so long at Tottenham. Doherty. And Jones accused of uh, going in on the back of the number eight, Allen. A little harshly dealt with, I would have thought, uh, David Jones. But Brentford get the free kick. Terry scales with it. Well, that most certainly was obstruction by Jones, and he deserves, yes, indeed. And the uh, free kick given. And the referee having a word with David Jones. Indirect free kick. Arm aloft, the referee in the distance, you can see. Obstruction there by David Jones. Jenkins has made a run, but Allen rather delayed it. And he made another run! And Ross, in fact, it was who very nearly got in there. And I suppose having got in that position will be very annoyed with himself for not having it planted it well wide of uh, goalkeeper Fred Davis to put Brentford ahead. He took up a lovely position there and completely lost the Bournemouth defence. Which is more than Ted McDougall at the moment seems to be able to do at the other end. It's Hawley watching him closely this half, just as Gilson had for most of the first half. And they've made a substitution of Bournemouth. Uh, Tony Powell has come on and Jimmy Gabriel has gone off into the bench there. So Jimmy Gabriel, an experienced defender, goes off and a young one comes off. Redknapp faced by Scales. To Howe. Redknapp again. Played for Mitchinson. And now McDougall, at last with a yard or so away from Gelson. He finds Redknapp. McDougall again. But a really strong challenge there by Gelson. A perfectly fair one and a good strong one. And Gelson, quite rightly, getting a round of applause for taming McDougall in that particular instance. And Brentford, in fact, getting a throw. And another one. Ross to Doherty. Machin. And Doherty having a word there with the referee as uh, the play whizzed by them. It's Machin. How on the far side. Cave nicely inside there for Miller. Played on again for Cave and cross first time. And that either hit the post or was pushed behind by Pretty. From the angle, it was hard to see. If it's a goal kick, then that must have hit the post. Yes, indeed. A lightning raid down the left there by Bournemouth with Cave very nearly. Uh, Scoring a spectacular goal to put Bournemouth ahead, but still 1-1. Ross, tenacity alone won in that one. Allen, almost knocked Machin's head off with it, and lucky perhaps after that to get a second go, but he's now with Doherty. Allen again, and Doherty had gone the other way. And Powell, no problems. Now, with five minutes to go... Oh, Nelms missing his chance, and Cave! Oh, and he hit the post! McDougall going in! Will he get a chance? I think it's gone too far. Well, that was a tremendous shot by Cave, beyond the reach of Pretty all the way. And against the post. So, Bournemouth, when it looked for a moment, too, as though Ted McDougall might be able to uh, capitalise on the rebound, get no more than a corner. Harry Redknapp taking it. 
Crossed again, and Peter Gelson there with no mistakes at all. How going in? Mitchinson. And Brentford certainly fighting, and there's a good ball from Doherty. But Miller there for Bournemouth, and Redknapp is well offside. Now it really is just a matter of seconds to the end of this third division game. It started brightly and fell away a bit towards the end, leaving this final score 1-1. The goals coming from John Doherty, first of all for Brentford, and then Ted McDougall, the equaliser for Bournemouth. So the full-time score here at Griffin Park is Brentford 1, Bournemouth 1. So a game that began so well, and indeed was a credit to the third division, rather fell away towards the end. But what about Ted McDougall? One fine goal to his credit, but not really in his best form. And I asked him afterwards if all the transfer talk had tended just to make him a little restless. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you've always got that nagging, nagging feeling in the back of your mind that you like this right here. You know, the first division I'm talking about. You know, it, it, it's always in the back of your mind, and you know. People say I'm not ambitious because I've, I've stopped at Bournemouth, but I'm as ambitious as the next next guy, like you know. And um, I, you know, if the chance comes, well, you know, I, you know, I'll just try and do my best anyway, you know. But as it's going at Bournemouth, you know, I'll see what happens, you know. But you would like, obviously, before you finish your playing career, to try the first division. Yes, um, I, I made a decision at 19 when I had two years to go of my apprenticeship as a line attack operator, and people said finish your apprenticeship and I said no I want to be a professional footballer and I tried it and it could have gone bump and it's the same decision now you know I could get to 40 odd 50 your age and, and uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> and uh, you know I, I probably regretted the rest of my life maybe you know we've spoken about this before haven't we we've always yeah. said that while yeah. while you're banging in goals people yeah. will always want you yeah and that's what makes you depressed when you're not banging them well obviously see today I mean I never played well but I scored and I mean that, that just means everything to me it's no good to me playing well. I've probably played maybe three, three, four matches where I've played, probably played better than I've ever played for this club and not scored. And I go home and I just don't get the same satisfaction at all. You know, it, it doesn't mean a thing to me, really. And now, manager John Bond. I said that we'd read that he's prepared to sell McDougall for the right fee, and yet sometimes that he's not for sale. It all seemed a little confusing. It's confusion in my mind at the moment, Brian, for the simple reason that I keep seeing conflicting stories in the press. I haven't made any statement whatsoever. All I've ever said is um, that I would like to keep Ted McDougall here as long as I possibly could. But I realise as well as anybody that he's terribly ambitious. He wants to try his hand in the first division and it may be that the time is drawing nearer when I may have to consider letting him go to a first division club um, to see if he's able to do his stuff up the top there. You know, that everybody, everybody's ambitious and Ted is no exception. The difficult question, I know for you to answer, but how near is this crunch decision coming? That's, that's a, such a difficult question, I couldn't... It could be sooner than later, really, Brian. That's as easy as I could make it for you, really. That's sooner than later that Ted moves what, to yeah, the First Division? Well, I think so, yes. You know, I mean, we've, I've had two good years with him, really. I've, I've, when I first came here, I was prepared to let him go after a couple of months. He's ability to take stuff in is, is as good as any footballer within the country and he's, and he's made such progress during the last two years that I really feel now that um, the time is near when he's made as much progress as he can make whilst Bournemouth are a third division club. If we, for instance, had got into the second division last year, I think probably um, that the position would have been that much easier for us and for Ted. He talks about being restless and a bit depressed. You've, you've obviously uh, are well aware of this. Yeah, well, I, I remember some time ago talking to you at our football ground and I said at the time that Ted McDougall was terribly self-centred when he got round about the penalty box. He's still this way, and, and why I say that is because he gets frustrated and upset with not scoring goals, Brian, and, and uh, uh, that's partly to do with the, the unrest with him at this moment. But there's other things, you know, when he looks at you on um, Saturday lunchtimes on the box and he sees you interviewing these players and he sees all these big first division grounds, it makes his eyes boggle and he thinks, I'd like to sample that. John, you were a defender in the First Division. How would that fellow make it in the First Division? I said uh, yesterday to somebody that 
I'm absolutely certain in my mind, because I know basically what I'm looking at, I know basically what he can do and what he can take in, the, and, and his knowledge of the game, that within nine months he will be the leading striker in the first division. Really? I, I'm, I'm as certain as that. You know, if, I, if I'd have moved to a uh, first division myself and I had a couple of opportunities, if I'd have moved, he would have come with me because he'll always come with me anywhere I go. Um, unfortunately, I'm staying at Bournemouth. Unfortunately, that is for Ted. Yeah. Um, but I would have taken him and I, I would have bet anybody as much money as they like that he would, he would repeatedly score between 20 and 30 goals a season. And what sort of money do you ask for a player like that? I really haven't asked any money at all. I let people... But you must have got a figure at the back of your mind well, somewhere, John. all right, I, I, I have. I, I wouldn't let him go under £200,000. Well, in spite of all that money, John Bond also told me that five First Division clubs had made a positive inquiry for McDougall in the last year. Well, Jimmy Hill watched McDougall yesterday in action with some of their representatives. Yeah, well, in fact, I sat there watching the match with uh, three Crystal Palace directors and uh, Eddie Bailey of Spurs and Bill Dodgin, who was scouting for West Ham. Uh, not an easy job for them to make up their minds. I tried to put myself in the position of a scout yesterday and see what I would think about paying £200,000 for Ted McDougall. In fact, I had an advantage, and we've got that advantage now, because we had a camera locked off on his performance for the whole of the game. We really wanted to find out what made this man tick. And in fact, he, he caused a quick impression in the game very early on, soon after the start. He goes to lay a ball back here and recovers so quickly and shows all the ability that he's got to steam for goal and hammer in shots in the penalty area. That was right after the start of the game. There's a friend advising him how he might even have got it in the net if he'd carry on. He's there, he heads the ball and wins it in the area. But I want you to watch also the determination. He comes steaming in here at the end, and in fact he came in so fast there that he got ahead of the ball. People might say that was a mischance, but it was his determination that got him in there too soon. Watch how he slips Peter Gelson here, but in fact he runs into an offside position, heads quite accurately and coolly, just missing the goal. He wants the ball in the penalty area. He gets annoyed if it doesn't come as often as he would like, because it's there that he can make himself look a £200,000 player. Look here when the ball doesn't come over, how angry he gets that it hasn't been put into the penalty area. In the air, in the area he's useful, in the middle of the field he doesn't win it that often. But this is where I think the scouts might have fought him. You see here, he tries a dummy. Gelson's coming in, going for the ball, and he loses possession. Having made a good run, the move breaks down on him. Maybe it wasn't the moment to try a dummy, but we see another example here. When he's close marked, of where he has good skill, he takes this ball down on his chest, but he allows his opponent to get his foot in. In other words, he doesn't screen when he's close marked, and once again, uh, the, the move has broken down on him, though Gerson did play him very well in the course of this match. Now you see him in space, and you see that when he's clear of an opponent, he has the ability to control the ball neatly and lay it off. But mainly, of course, a man of this calibre, a goal scorer extraordinary, has the knack of being there. Just watch, when the ball hits the post from that shot, who's there when it bounces off? Ted McDougall, showing that he's quick and nippy for a man of his size. And finally, of course, the goal. Almost as if it were done for our benefit, there's the first header, accurately placed, but not quite accurate enough, and then the turn and the superb volley, which makes one wonder, if a man can score goals like that in the third division, can he do it in the first? And of course, that's really the question that everyone is asking themselves. There's going to be a lot of discussion going on in boardrooms and in houses over the next few days among the clubs who are interested to say, can he do it when he gets in the first division? Because really with a player, it's not what you see where he is, it's what you can make of him, as Bill Shankly said to me only a couple of weeks ago, when you get him back home. I don't think it'll be quite £200,000. I do think he'll go quite quickly, but I think it'll be knocking on that. If you ask me, would I buy him if I were a manager? Well... Uh, depends how much my knees were knocking at the time, how near the bottom of the league I was or how near the top I thought I ought to get. I'm not going to give a direct answer. Why should I? The other people have paid for it. Let them have a stab. But more than that, what about Brentford? I was encouraged by Brentford's performance. I think they're fitting happily into the third division. Uh, they were unlucky losing Stuart Houston it, with an injury so soon after they'd transferred O'Mara. But nevertheless, they've got an all-round spirit and fire. I think they're a credit to their manager, Frank Blunston. It was an enterprising third division game, maybe a little too rough in parts, but nevertheless, I think uh, Brentford fit happily into the third division. 
Well, one last word on Ted McDougall. The big match for you, at any rate, is that we have a strong hunch that McDougall could well be on the move to the First Division now and within a matter of days, we shall see. Now let's have some more action, and for this we go to the goals uh, from an all-Midland game between Nottingham Forest and Aston Villa at the City Ground. Well, the commentator's Hugh Johns, the pictures come from ATV. Forest are in the dark shirts, and we pick up the match in the second half. Great stretch to the left. There's the shot. Ball won't go out, so Great can try again. Hindley and Cotton both over there. Lockhead. Hoping to knock it down for Rioch, and it didn't reach him. It's Fraser. Ooh, and that was such a foolish thing to do. Fraser coming back. And Mackenzie, a very fortunate fellow then, the number nine. Took a wild whack at Rioch, and down. Good job, he didn't make contact. Ian Ross. Nickel then, long with the free kicks. Lockhead out here. And that's McMahon, Brayton, and it's Evans. How the devil did Aston Villa miss three chances there? McMahon, Brayton, and finally Evans. Unforgivable misses by Aston Villa. That's Ross, Rioch. I think uh, Villa manager Vic Crow must be tearing at that red hair of his at this moment of time. Caught him with this free kick. It's Mackenzie jumping well, and there's little Mackenzie! Mac McIntosh, sorry, McIntosh, McIntosh. Mackenzie knocked it in, and McIntosh very nearly pinched himself a goal there. That's Aitken the clearance. Evans on the far side, what a good ball is Brayton. Brayton couldn't control it first time, he's kept it in play though. Evans. Good try and a volleyed shot by Alan Evans. O'Neill down for Lyle. Forrest still trying to stretch them. Dougie Fraser on a break on the right side. That's coming across for Lyle. And the chance for Richardson. Only hit nickel. And it's broken well for Villa. Great. Rioch has started running on this left side. Beautiful piece of work by Rioch. And a no goal! Oh, what a tragic moment then for young John Cotton. Cotton, an own goal, and he is sick. Look at the look on that boy's face. What a terrible moment then for Cotton. one nothing it is, Bella. And one looks back then on a fabulous ball for Graydon to pick up Rioc on this left side. The ball hammered low across the box. Cotton trying to clear it, put it firmly in the back of the net. Hindley for Lyle. And Nickel a long, long high clearance, putting the pressure on Dave Sorella as Lockett comes in there. Lockett goes on running. Andy Lockhead seems to pick up a, a galloping gait when he goes on those sort of runs. Oh, what a terrible mistake. Graydon from Evans. And that's Lockhead. Oh, what a save. Graydon. And another one. Fantastic goalkeeping by Jim Barron. And the mounted police now beginning to move in on yet another fight developing on the terraces. Villa sensing that Forrest are now going forward and put three men forward now. It's caught him under pressure. Sorella well up. He got knocked in the air when he went up. Forrest sensing then that uh, there might be a, an equaliser on here and now going 
strongly forward for it, perhaps exposing themselves a little at the back. And Villa are ready to capitalise if the chance comes. That's Vaud. Lockhead. And a turn against Sorella. Richardson coming to join in. And Richardson wins it. Lockhead pounding after him. That's McKenzie now against Ross. Neatly done. For O'Neill. O'Neill still trying it. Richardson now. Back in Josh Fraser. What a good goal! What a good goal! That's Fraser with the equaliser. Dougie Fraser scoring his very first goal ever for Nottingham Forest since he joined the club from West Bromwich Albion. In this is 64th league appearance for them. Ties up the scoreline, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a more delighted set of players. The build-up in the box, tight, very tight, and Fraser the punishing punch on the end of it. And that's how it finished 1-1. And next we come to your letters, and the first one today comes from some irate Orient fans who noticed that Granada TV covered the Blackpool Orient match last week, and yet we showed none of it on our particular program. K. Irvin of 27 Fox Hunter Walk, Billericay in Essex, and R. Sampson of 59 Butte Road, Barkingside, it also in Essex. They are obviously O's fans. Uh, well, here are the goals from that 1-1 draw. Blackpool against Orient, and Blackpool in the light shirts. Suddick on his left, Burns and Parker in the middle. This is Suddick. Hutchison back again, given a beautiful ball. Burns! <laughs> Boya slipped his man. And he's pulled across back well, and Bullock has got it in. 1-1. One, one. So it finished 1-1 one, one there to the O's. Uh, and in fact, Orient got another draw yesterday, didn't they? Against Queen's Park Rangers, 2-2. Two, two. A very interesting letter this week from Mr K Johnson of London SW6 who says he's heard that there's an international footballer who wears a hairpiece. Could this possibly be true? Well, it is true, Mr Johnson. The footballer in question is one George Highlands, the long-standing international fullback from Belgium. Here he is, hairpiece and all. He's in the all-white strip there, in action against Hungary in this summer's European Championships. Now, in case you feel we've rather given away George's secret, I should add that he had it fitted several years ago in a blaze of Belgian publicity, for which I'm sure he got uh, a healthy fee, and indeed he was featured in a lot of uh, Brussels hairdressing shops. I also have it on very good authority from my Belgian colleague, Rick de Sadlin. I'm sure you're wondering about this. In five years, it's never been blown off, and indeed it's never been knocked off when George Highlands has gone up to head a ball. Right, let's have some more action now. And it's Manchester United, without a win in the league this season, who yesterday stepped up to face the league champions Derby County at Old Trafford. The pictures come from Granada Television, the commentators Gerald Sinstadt, Manchester United in the dark shirts. Now Bobby Charlton. Handball by McGovern. Donald. Moore trying his luck on the right, but with no more success. Best scooping it up for Moore. And Ian Moore's move to the right pays off for Manchester United. This is the move that started it. Moore himself, done, scooped up by Best, and there's Moore, and no chance for Bolton, a yard off his line. Davis's header to Morgan, and he slipped round Gemmel, and he's away. That's good play by Willie Morgan. Eventually ran into one man too many, but he had no choice but to try and keep going. Young clipping Gemmel. Ish. To O'Hare, good ball. Pulled across too hard and it came behind Hector. But the 
second half opening in much the same pattern as the first with Derby doing most of the attacking Manchester United sometimes being caught at the limit of their ability to kick them out Hinton's cross palmed away by Stepney turned back in here's McFarland for O'Hare and he can't get it in yet they're asking for a penalty that really was the most extraordinary save by Stepney and the foul has been given against O'Hare and it's a free kick to Manchester United and Morgan brings it under control gets it up to best for Davis beautifully judged pass from best on a lovely back heel Todd fouls Davis but best gives the ball to Moore and Manchester United are playing some football now that little exchange between best and Davis there was an absolute gem a difficult pass from best weighted to perfection James for Morgan Clear. Davis! Wynne Davis crowns his league debut for Manchester United with a magnificent goal, the first he has scored since January the 1st for Manchester City. Here it comes again, not properly cleared, and Davis turns on it and hammers it past Bolton. Last goal he got in the league game was against Tottenham for Manchester City on the 8th of January. Done. McGovern. Kemmel. This is Hinton. Hinton gets it back. Oh, what a great save by Stepney. That was all the way. Alex Stepney really to the rescue of Manchester United there. Now Hector with the corner. Hennessy's header, and Stepney again, caught the ball, and caught Tony Dunn, just under a quarter of an hour to go, Manchester United leading 2-0. And that's a beautiful ball from Best to Morgan, and Morgan's got a real chance here, and he's made it! Three from Willie Morgan. And the telling factor, that glorious pass from Best. Now Morgan has to keep his head. Bolton narrows the angle, but Morgan finds the corner, and it's 3 0. <laughs> Donald. James. Best. Tony Dunn. Young. Moore. O'Hare for Hector. Hinton. Did well to get in his shot. It's gone off for a corner because it was half blocked. It's the tenth corner that Derby have had. But for all the pressure. Some 
Sometimes somewhat desperate covering by Manchester United and a few very good saves by Stepney have held the day so far and again Stepney scoops it away and again! Charlton. Charlton to Duck. McGovern getting it inside to Gemmell. O'Hare. Gemmell again. Nish lurking. Comes out to Hinton. Hennessy's header and another superb save by Stepney. And Manchester United leading 3-0. But recalling three tremendous saves by Stepney makes you realise how close this game could have been. Well, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the programme. We leave you today indeed where we started with Ted McDougall and with his wonderful goal at Brentford yesterday. It might even be one of his last ones for Bournemouth. And then the big question, in whose colours will he score the next one? Boyer, Murray sticking with him, Redknapp with a chance to cross it, flicked on by Mitchinson, Dougal in there, oh, and McDougal almost got it, and he did, Ted McDougal. Oh.